Well, thank you so much for coming out here tonight. Um, I know that uh, I know that it's, we're in the middle of spring break here. Um, I know that softball season started. Um, we didn't have a whole lot of notice for this meeting, uh, and uh, I really appreciate your spending time uh, here this evening with, a little bit with us, and we hope it'll be worth your while. Uh, just kind of the way we're going to work is I uh, have a talk here about 45 minutes. Uh, we're going to talk about, um, uh, just to get you quickly up to speed, if you haven't already, about the proposed toll lanes on I-77, and then we're going to talk about um, we're going to talk, talk about our meeting that we had last week in Rome. Um, so just by way of review, uh, what is a hot lane? Um, that stands for a high occupancy toll lane. Can you all hear me if I'm turning like this? Am I good? Okay. Yep. I, I can't even see a nod now. Anyway, okay. okay. So um, for three or more occupants, um, everybody else, uh, if you have less than three occupants in the vehicle, um, you would pay and you pay electronically. There would be no toll booths uh, on the road. The toll itself would be based on congestion pricing, is what it's called. That is basically the higher the level of congestion in the general purpose lanes, uh, the higher the toll would be. And the reason for that is uh, because the toll company has to guarantee what's called a level of service. And that level of service is basically the, um, the tolls in the, uh, or excuse me, the speed in the general purpose lane would never be less than 45 miles an hour. Um, this is going to be designed to operate uh, for profit by a private company. Um, you'll hear that is called a public-private partnership, and throughout the evening here, I'm going to refer to that as a P3. I'm going to hear that term quite a bit here. Um, it is a 50-year contract, and under that contract, um, the trucks will be prohibited from using the uh, toll lane, and that's an important point here we'll get to in just a few minutes. All right, so uh, at the risk of stating the obvious, it's good to get a common understanding of the problem. But as you probably all know, we have this conge congested stretch of four lane road from exit 23 to 36. Um, that road has not been wide since it was put in in the 1970s, and since that time, the area's population has grown tenfold. Uh, we've estimated a kind of a, a, a bare bones plan, which is adding a general purpose lane in either directions from just south of exit 23 up to 36. Uh, we don't have recent estimates on that, but we say it's somewhere between 80 and 130 million dollars. Uh, the cost for um, the current hotline proposal is 27 and uh, half miles of hotlines and $550 million. That starts, I don't know if you can see that, that starts in downtown Charlotte, and then that goes all the way uh, up to Morrisville. So if we compare these two side by side, and we're saying, well, let's, you know, if, if the, the state is strapped for money, let's spend the money where we need it. Uh, and let's spend about 13 miles a road uh, for this amount, as opposed to um, 27 miles a road uh, for uh, quite a bit more. Why? What's the big difference here uh, between the price tag? Why is this one half a million dollars and that one hundred thirty million dollars? Um, I don't expect you to read this chart. <clears throat> it's okay, but the visual will make sense. Um, basically, um, just just look at all the arrows that are pointed here. All those arrows represent a construction project. Okay, so it's replacing the bridge at Hamilton. It's replacing the bridge at the South. Uh, it's making having an interstate. That's uh, eliminating the pedestrian bridge. You have the majority of the cost of the project is here in downtown Charlotte, and as we know, the majority of the travel time savings is going to be up here through Lake Norman. And we do have a Westmoreland bridge being replaced, uh, Hambright, uh, reverse that, uh, Hambright, Westmoreland, and then also uh, Griffith Street being replaced as well. Um, but basically, um, you know, part of the issue that we have with the plan is uh, you, the Lake Norman commuter, will be subsidizing a, a lot of the improvements in Charlotte. Uh, with you know, about a whole lot of benefit to that for you as far as the travel time. All right, uh, another thing about hot lanes, uh, just, just the nature of the project is hot lanes rely on congestion with the congestion pricing. Um, more congestion means more toll revenue. On well, this picture here, you see these cars backed up. This actually set a record toll price of $9. This is I-15 in San Diego. Um, so just the takeaway from that is that hot lanes uh, sometimes may have come in and thought, well, look, if we just widen the road, uh, that's better than nothing actually ensure congestion as opposed to relieving it. And in fact, the folks that, uh, even the uh, tolling advocates, will say it is an alternative to congestion, not a solution. Um, as far as the economic burden, uh, again, we don't need to read individual things. We'll just look at this uh, kind of at a gross level. Um, this is a slide actually from the, uh, the management expert that was in here a couple times here last month, if y'all remember that. Um, and we're going to focus on this part here, which is the uh, which is the operation. These are the existing toll lanes within the United States. 
A couple of things stand out. Um, you have here, uh, this is State Route 91 in California. That is the second most congested highway in the United States of America, and that has by far, as you can see, the highest toll revenues. Remember, we have a project that costs over half a billion dollars. A number of folks have come up with an estimate that our estimated toll revenues are going to need to be somewhere between uh, the order of 20 to 30 million dollars per year. So if you look at that, you say, well, wait a minute, that means we have to have uh, the second highest grossing uh, toll revenues uh, in the United States. Now, who's going to pay that? Well, it's most of the people who live uh, in the Lake Norman area. And by way of comparison, another one that stands out here, this is I-15 in, uh, in uh, uh, Salt Lake City. Um, similar metropolitan area as Charlotte, um, that grosses about $600,000 a year. Um, so if we were to do this and have those required revenues, again, a number of sources have come up with that number, um, it basically would cost somewhere in the order of about $200 a year for every man, woman, child, and current lives in the Lake Norman area. Um, we look at this and we say, you know, you don't need to be an MBA to say, look, if your costs are 20 times your expected revenue, uh, that pretty much is a bad business plan, right? Um, and, and we hope that come December, when this thing is, uh, is up for a contract, we hope that this thing will collapse under its own weight. Uh, the problem is, hope is not a strategy. All right, and, and we've seen strange things. In fact, it could be, and you'll see a little bit here, that the, um, that the, uh, the state has much grander plans, and this may be even, I'm speculating here a little bit, this may even be a lost leader for some of those grander plans. Um, some other factoids. Um, automated vehicle occupancy verification. A number of you have asked about, uh, well, how, how are they going to know if this is all electronic that you have three or more persons in the vehicle? And the fact is that that technology um, doesn't exist. Uh, they tried infrared technology in, um, in San Diego, it did not work. Uh, right now what, uh, what basically people have resorted to is you can, you can register a carpool uh, or you have a switch that you can flip on your transponder uh, to say that you have a carpool. So basically one of the key provisions, uh, we really don't have a way to enforce and uh, so we're, we're, we're kind of on the system. They also tried what they call flooding it with law enforcement, but that hasn't worked either. Now, you never want to say never about technology, but as of today, that any POV technology doesn't exist. The other thing is um, something that sounds a little bit obscure. It's called the MAP 21 legislation. And I'll just read this for a second. It writes a categorical exclusion of every capacity edition within the existing right away. Okay. In English, uh, let me explain. One of the key provisions, or one of the key justifications for toll limits to begin with, was this thing called an environmental assessment. And the environmental assessment was basically um, any capacity addition within an area that has bad air quality required an extensive environmental review. And so what the tolling advocates have said is, um, well, we're going to apply for an exclusion to that environmental review, and we're going to get a much more streamlined process. And this was one of the justifications for tolling. The fact is that it gets what's called a categorical exclusion. It doesn't have to go through that long, drawn-out environmental review process, okay? But what happened is, with this MAP 21 legislation, this was passed and signed into law by President Obama last July, is it grants that same exclusion to any capacity addition, whether, so long as it stays within the right of way. Okay, so whether it's a toll lane or whether it's a general purpose lane, so long as it stays within the existing right of way, it has that same exclusion, that same streamlined process. So it basically puts general purpose lanes on the same legal footing as the toll lanes. Now, if I could pause here for a minute and just see a show of hands, how many of you, if you've attended any of the uh, government sponsor sessions, learned either of those two factoids? Okay, it is, and I'll get on my soapbox, or I guess I'll get on my higher soapbox here for a minute, and that is, um, you know, we have a unique situation here that um, we have a, a bunch of citizens that work very hard to become knowledgeable with this, and I would say, uh, I don't see a whole lot of elected officials here, but if you do hold another one of these, um, one of these information sessions, then to please include somebody from Y977 there, so we could, so that the citizens could get the full story. In that let's call it a sales session. All right. So just in a brief summary then, um, so we know that the plan costs a lot more than general purpose lengths, it's a lot more than um, an insurance congestion, limits our ability to make future improvements because if we widen I-77 further with general purpose lanes, that uh, private company would be compensated for any lost toll revenues. 
and it locks us into an agreement with a private company for 50 years. We saw that it's going to take 20 to 30 million dollars, suck that right out of our economy. Uh, odds are that would go to a foreign owned company which has no ties to the region except that they want to take 20 to 30 million dollars out of our economy uh, and use it for whatever their purposes are abroad. All right, so that's our take on 77. And what y'all came here for? Uh, well, what did, what did Raleigh have to say about this? So uh, we went to Raleigh. Um, let me back up. Um, we had worked for weeks to get an appointment with uh, Speaker of the House, Tom Tillis. Um, his office said, okay, uh, you should only bring uh, a limited number of people. And basically what we were expecting was that we were expecting a conversation between constituent and legislator. Um, so we went there last week. And uh, we got there, and as you can tell, I'm hobbling around here, I'm reconstructing me. Um, so I sat down, and a couple other people went up to his office, and, uh, and they came back down and said, well, they moved the meeting to a different room. And so we went off to a different room. And we go in there, and there are 40 people in this room. And they are, uh, you got NCDOT folks, his staff, uh, you have a consultant, and you have a number of our elected officials. And so what we thought was going to be um, uh, you know, an exchange of ideas between constituent and legislator, in fact, turned into more of a um, more of a, of, a, of a press event. Now, and, and in the legislator's defense, uh, they did not know. Actually, we did not know that we were going to Raleigh on town hall day when all elected officials are allowed to come and visit. Um, so they thought, hey, this is great. This is just an open meeting between. Uh, you know, with, between the commissioner and a couple of constituents that were invited, and, and, and so, so, so I mean, I think they, they were, uh, you know, weren't, weren't aware of that, uh, that particular fact, but nevertheless, um, you know, we didn't, we didn't have the exchange of dialogue uh, that, that we thought uh, we would. Um, and also we had about, I don't know, about a dozen people or so on the phone as well with a couple of journalists, and what happened was the speaker got up, he stood the lecture like I'm doing now. Um, he said a couple of things, and, and those made the headlines that carried today. And, and then we, we drove back to we went, drove back to Charles. Um, so what, what did he say uh, about 77? Well, this is kind of the headline that was reported here. He said, "Look, the thing it is, um, you're going to get uh, a toll rate, or you're going to get nothing for 15 or 20 years, and that probably doesn't come as a surprise to any of you." So this is what the speaker said about toll rates on I-77. What we'd like to do is share with you a video about what the speaker said on toll lines on I-95. Now this is, um, we're really pushing, we're amateurs here folks, so we're really pushing this, but this is a handheld recording that we're gonna play through speakers through the public address system um, with the truck idling in the background. <laughs> All right, but I put it, and we're gonna try and run, um, we're gonna try and run PowerPoint at the same time we're running a video, so um, just, we're amateurs, okay? Just keep that in mind here and we'll see if we can make this work.
Sorry, I can't stick up on anybody. <laughs> So hopefully you can hear some of that. I know the audio was terrible, but uh, we're going to go ahead and we're going to post that on uh, on the um, website here uh, sometime tonight. So you'll be able to download that for your thing. Um, could you could you move the uh, could you move the, speed, uh, the uh, cursor out of the, out of the middle of the? Uh, hey, Kurt, how long ago was that? Did, did uh, Tillis make that statement? Um, I have to go look at that. Um, yeah. The video was posted early 2012. I think so. We'll, we'll get to that, um, but uh, I'll, we'll look that up. That was, by the way, that was to um, that was the uh, Truckers Association. And remember, I mentioned that uh, that the, uh, they were basically the ones who killed that. And uh, and I mentioned that uh, that the, uh, the Truckers Association. Um, uh, it, it, well, excuse me. There were, there were going to be no uh, trucks allowed on, on the toll lane on I seventy seven. Right. So we're hoping to get the Truckers Association line with this. So, all right. So, um, anyway, so that's what he said about um, I-77 versus I-95. Um, he also talked about fiscal realities and political realities. We'll take each one of those in turn. Uh, fiscal realities, the state doesn't have any money. Fuel tax receipts are declining. Well, let's, let's take a look at the fiscal realities first. Um, before we do that, I'll let you find the same thing. I'll let that in here for a minute. That's about a $70,000 Lexus. Nice. Um, yeah. Uh, and then you can't quite see it, but um, that's the license of Charleston. Um, so you think if you were going to work for the state, you could just find a car. <laughs> so maybe, anyway, maybe this, maybe this, um, uh, this sentence wasn't quite complete. The state has no money for roads, but it does for a license. Okay. 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 All right, so let's talk about um, North Carolina's first tour. Let's talk about what the state does spend money on, all right? This is the first tour road in North Carolina. This is called the Triangle Expressway. Uh, these pictures were taken at about 10 o'clock on a weekday morning. This road now carries about 6,000 vehicles per day, which is about as much as I-77 carries at, at 45 minutes. Um, it costs $1 billion, billion with a B. Um, that is a public road. It was about $670 million of uh, North Carolina bonds, and the balance was a loan, if you will, from the federal government. Uh, the General Assembly has set aside $25 million per year for the next 30 years to cover anticipated shortfalls in revenues and operating costs. And, and the kicker is in 20 years, this is called the Triangle Expressway, it's expected to carry half the traffic as I-77 does today. So this is part of what we're spending roads on. Um, the the, excuse me, the uh, speaker also talked about gas tax receipts. Uh, and the fact is over the long term, uh, we see even as even as uh, the uh, uh, the amount of fuel that we sell, or excuse me, the amount of vehicles that are that are traveling, the miles traveled increases because fuel economy is getting better. The gallon sold is actually decreased. This is not quite about this chart because it doesn't start at zero, so it exaggerates the chance, the uh, the difference there. But the net result is um, gas taxes are expected to peak and then kind of go through a slow decline. Um, and so that's part of the justification that's been used for Toros as well. But you know what? I don't really think it applies to our situation. But I'll tell you why. Um, because uh, what we have, remember that $550 million that we talked about earlier? Okay, well, if you break that down, uh, there's up to $170 million of public money. Okay? Um, so there's, and it's actually in the contract. If you were to go look at the contract, you would see a lot of this maximum available public funds, $170 million. Um, so, uh, so we're saying, well, there's already some money that's allocated, obviously, for some construction on I-77. Uh, it rather begs the question: uh, if there's 170 million public funds, and general purpose lands to cost 130 million dollars, uh, there's enough public money, but can we use it for general purpose lanes? All right, and now we start to get into what the political realities are. Okay, all right, and so we're going to take those in turn. We'll talk about we'll talk about the feds first. Um, so if we look at the breakdown of that $170 million, uh, the bulk of it is right here. Uh, and this is, the, just to, this is the State Mobility Fund, which is, the, which is a merit-based fund I'll talk about here in a couple of minutes. CMAX stands for Congestion Mitigation Air Quality. That was a, uh, that was a grant uh, for the tolling equipment. And then this NHPP is the federal bucket of money um, that, uh, uh, that has been set aside. <coughs> Out of that federal bucket of money, that's the money that has been set aside uh, for this particular project. So, <coughs> um, now, 
are the Fed saying we have to build um, toll lines? Well, we asked. Uh, we said, we asked, does federal funding receive a higher priority um, due to the hotlines? And the answer is no. Uh, we're getting the same amount regardless of the project we build. The feds play no part in the selection of projects uh, that use this federal funding. All right? So as far as the politics from the federal standpoint, that's basically not an issue. All right? um, so now that takes us, we're going to jump here, but we're going to take us to the um, local politics. All right? And, uh, and you know, we've heard a number of um, local elected officials say, look, um, and I'm picking on Mayor Woods here because I had a quote, but they basically say, you know what, this is a state issue. What are the direction of the state? Davidson doesn't manage 77, or Charlotte, Mecklenburg County, Iowa County, um, it's really a state issue. All right, so, so we traveled to Raleigh to hear Tom Tell say, well, the state doesn't decide, it's a local issue. Uh, it's basically in the hands of MUMPO, and we're going to talk about MUMPO quite a bit. MUMPO stands for Mecklenburg Union Metropolitan Planning Organization. Uh, that is the, as the name implies, there are two counties, uh, and it's going to expand, but for now, um, that uh, they're charged with rolling up all the priorities for roads. So what the, what the speaker was saying is basically that, um, that uh, Right now, MUMPO has given us a very low priority, and you need to bump that priority up. In fact, um, and this has been widely reported, uh, the, the latest rollout they did, they, they gave widening I-77 up to Catawba uh, a priority of number 93 on uh, the list of things to do. Uh, and so what the speaker said is, look, unless the local entity, that's MUMPO he's referring to, uh, changes how they're going to prioritize roads, um, you know, you're, you're just not going to get the state interested in, uh, in, in, in uh, allocating funds for general purpose land. So, you know, MUMBO has to change uh, how they're going to prioritize roads. We need to get a better priority than number 93. Well, guess what? Uh, the MUMBO criteria are changing. Um, they're going through, uh, and, and this was just recently adopted, there's two tiers, and there's tier one, tier two, and, and I'll, I'll take those uh, in turn here, because I think it bears a little bit of a closer examination. Um, so what we have here is, um, here's the score weighting um, under the old system, under the new system, and we just, we just took a swag and we said, look, if it's really red, that means it, it, it would really hurt widening I-77 with general purpose lines. And if it's really green, it really helps. Well, the big one that stands out is this guy right here. Reduces congestion where it's basically the same weight as everything else. Now accounts for fully one third of all the criteria, uh, of, excuse me, all the points that are available. And, and as you know, the congestion is, well, it's a service level F, um, it's pretty bad. So we expect that to be a tremendous help. The other one is this access employment centers. Um, they basically give additional weight if it's a regional project. Uh, at which this is considered. So again, we see um, some help there. So we expect to sail through uh, that first funnel, and, and that first bucket of the funnel, and we go on to tier two. And this is even better. Um, the the cost-benefit. Uh, as before, it was that, that whole cost-benefit criteria, the way I interpreted it, was um, we kind of got to slush fund, like if we really like this project, we're gonna give it some additional points. Um, and now what you have is, get this, here's the criteria. Um, it's the ta travel time saved per construction dollar. I'll say that again, travel time saved per construction dollar. Does that not make sense? Um, and so, as we know, uh, it, it, it's not a difficult project to wind that seven, seven. so we expect a, a huge positive lift out of that. The other thing is, there's this whole slug of red guys here, that's 36% of all the total points that are no longer criteria. Access is transit, that means basically they give extra points if they went to a bus terminal or a train station uh, or to the airport. My favorite, the center city, they gave extra points if it was close to the center of Charlotte, no longer criteria. Impacts air quality, they figured out that um, if we get traffic moving again, that's going to have air quality, no longer criteria, we're going to take another hit. And this interval of connectivity, um, you need to uh, uh, you need to pay attention to that particular word. Intermodal, we're going to see that word a couple more times, is kind of code for a toll lane. Um, so this is basically, I call this kind of the, uh, what is, where's my property? This is the, that's, that's the toll lane artificial sweetener, all right, to make those projects basically be um, a higher priority. So, um, the, I said if we go through this ranking with this new criteria, I-77 general purpose lanes are going to be a much higher priority. 
question is, when are they going to do this? Well, they're scheduled to do this, and they have to have it done by May of 2014, which raises another question. If the 50-year contract is supposed to be signed in December, uh, but the new Mumble ranking won't be done by 2014, doesn't it make sense to wait four months for the new Mumble rankings before we sign a 50-year contract? Um, Now I've got to give you some bad news. Uh, <laughs> two things. First, there's no guarantee that Mumpo is even going to rank I-77 as a proper, uh, with general purpose lines, as a project. All right? They just may rank the I-77 toll line project, and that's it. So that ranking, all that good stuff that was earlier, may not even see the light of day. Um, the other thing is, uh, just to kind of head off part of the uh, uh, blunt, some of the argument that comes from this, uh, Tolling proponents will point out that you know we delayed 485 by a few months, and what they did was they um, th that delayed, <coughs> excuse me, that delayed uh, the whole winding by 10 years, and we don't want to do that. Uh, big difference, all right. Here we're staring down the barrel of a 50-year contract, all right. Um, so, so I bring this up um, because. The decision is going to be made in December, and uh, November is before December, which <laughs> aren't you glad you came to mind? Um, <laughs> and there's an election in November. Oh. And, uh, and what happens is, um, you know, coming about summertime, we go through this every other year ritual where uh, incumbents and, and challengers will kind of say various about the same four things. You know, it's a great place to live. Um, we need to uh, uh, support our police. We need better schools, and I'm going to fight for roads. How many times have you heard that? I'm going to fight for roads, right? Well, now we have the opportunity, um, an unprecedented opportunity, because why I 77 has been in contact with basically every commissioner to see who is actually going to fight for roads. I only see one commissioner here tonight, Danny. Thanks so much for making the trip. Danny, any ghost from Oh, sorry, Jeff. Um, I didn't recognize you. Hi, Jeff. Um, two commissioners from Ohio. Thank you so much. Um, is, um, you know, again, going with Speaker Tillis's word, we need to get Mumbo to rank I-77 with general purpose lanes using the new criteria, all right? And then we need to push this back uh, four months um, so that we can get that new criteria, because we're going to see, this plays hugely into how the state uses it, and we're going to see this here in a minute. All right, uh, so we talked about the federal, we talked about the local, and we'll talk about the state. Um, Here's what the NCDOT says about the state. This is the number two guy at the North Carolina Department of Transportation. Um, this is in a, in a broader context, I don't want to leave that. But basically, he said, look, uh, my, my perspective is that express lane, you read that toll lane, should be how we add future capacity to all our interstates. Number two guy at the NCDOT, wants, if we're going to widen it for a way, he wants it to be a toll lane. He does not want to widen an interstate with the general purpose lane, period. And we see that through this mobility fund. Uh, here's the, uh, the, 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 again, uh, well, it's kind of a complicated formula, but you have the cost benefit from this, uh, which is worth 80%. And then remember we talked about that multimodal, intermodal thing? All right? Um, what that is, is uh, translate that, that means hot lines are worth an extra 20%. Uh, and so we see that the one area where uh, projects in the state can compete on there, uh, they're still doing an artificial sweetener of, uh, of 20%. So the fact is, from a state perspective, the state of North Carolina wants to build tollings. Um, let's talk about this mobility platform. Uh, here, this is, this is a ranking, by the way, this is, this is uh, uh, there are 95 projects uh, that were in the mobility fund. Um, the mobility fund was set aside kind of separate from what's called equity funding I'll talk about in a minute. Uh, again, more projects could be done there. Uh, this number one, uh, was trying to go on a bus thing. It was like a $200,000 project to like paint stripes on the road or something like that. So the top project um, of any import was uh, I-77 hot lanes. Uh, and you see that score there. Well, if we took away the hot lane artificial sweetener, uh, that drops it basically from number two um, to number four. Uh, that basically puts it in the top 
5% of projects statewide, again, we kind of have to ask that question, why would that not qualify for funding? Um, well, what did Tom Till say about that? You know what, that option to use mobility funds is not on the table. Uh, if Wilmington wants a, wants a, uh, wants a toll lane, uh, then we're going to take the money uh, from the Lake Norman area and we're going to go ahead and give that to Wilmington. Kind of begs the question, where is Wilmington on this list? <coughs> anyway, all right. Um, so, we'll go back to, uh, we need to talk a bit about the state part and how it displays it. And I know this is a difficult chart to read. Um, again, it's, it's, it, just look at the colors, okay? And then, and then uh, you can look at this outline. But, um, yeah, of course, that's not focused very well. But this is this is the state highway priority list. Okay, it comes from their office of strategic planning. This list is about 1,249 projects long. All right, these ones here. This is um, basically I-77 through Iredale. This is I-77 through Mecklenburg. This quantitative score here, you can think of that as that's based on merit. Okay, so that, that takes into account the cost benefit, that takes into account how it re relieves congestion, that takes into account safety. That's the project merit. And then these things here, the division, how much the division decides, how much the local folks decide, and here's that multimodal thing again, all right, the, the hot lane sweetener, how much that decides, uh, adds up to what the total score is. I want to point out a couple of things. The first is if you look at project merit, I-77 up to Catawba Avenue has the highest project merit of any project in the state. 1,249 is number one. Um, if we go to Irondale, uh, you have a little more cost because you've got to go, you got to go over the causeways and there's not quite as much traffic. Uh, that comes as far as project merit goes, it comes in at number four. Um, what kills us as far as not being the top priority overall is this right here. Uh, the folks at Lumbo basically gave us a zero where they give given other things a hundred. Um, and then there's a weighted average and that, that basically drops down our score. Well, you get a zero when you're ranked number 93. Um, and, uh, and so that, that rather begs the question, um, you know, what if we could get Lumbo to actually support general purpose lines? I'm glad you asked that question because we have the answer. Um, and that is that if we change that to, um, to, uh, to 100, um, look what comes out at the top of the list. The top of the list is widening I-77 up to exit 28. Uh, and then uh, Iredell as well comes out pretty high at number three. Now you may ask, look, I mean, if we're number four or number seven as it is out of 1,249 projects, why can't we get funding? The reason is there's something called the equity formula, and that equity formula, we'll go back here. That equity formula, um, we only get so much funding each year for what's called a, a, a district. And our district also includes things like Independence Boulevard. So if you've got a huge capital project ahead of you, like widening uh, Independence Boulevard, uh, you're going to have to wait a long time uh, before the, that, uh, those equity, it uses up the equity formula um, until it's your turn. Uh, so that's why I think <coughs> that uh, if we had Mumbo on board with this, we could be number one and, uh, and we can move forward. The other thing I want to point out um, is that uh, uh, this, what if, we believe in Y-77 that if hotlines are such a great idea that you compete on their own merit and that you shouldn't have a hotline screen here, what if we took away that, those extra points? Suddenly, God, look what happens. Uh, I-77 comes up to the top of both of those. And not only that, I want you to look at the score here. This is, again, I-77 widening it up to Catawba, heads and shoulders above the next one. It's the only one in the 80s. It's like, you know, 15% higher than what the next one is. So if we compete on merit, um, there's, a, there's a very clear win. Now, what did the speaker say about this? Look, you get told you know this for 20 years, you're not going to get mobility funds, and you're not going to get support from Monaco. Why? Well, maybe it's part of a larger plan. Um, this is from a fast line study that was done a couple years ago. Um, this is looking at potential toll lanes uh, in the Charlotte area. Uh, again, I know kind of a tough chart to read, but I just want to point your attention. So yeah, I said instead of north, I said south, I 85 north, I 85 south. I have 45 south, 45 west, 45 where to go, northeast. I don't know what freeways that leads out. Um, again, this goes back to what we saw with, uh, with, uh, uh, with uh, Mr. Trogdon's quote, which is basically what um, any capacity addition on a freeway could be a toll road. And in fact, they're looking at this and they're saying, gosh, we could have a quarter of a billion dollars of toll revenue coming out of that country. Um, not only that, um, this is um, another reason why the state might want to look at this. This is the, uh, their, um, 
protected funding, and I know this is kind of an innocuous looking pie chart, until you look at this guy right here. I know that's tough to read again, uh, but that stands for, that's NCTA financing $788 million. NCTA, anybody know what that stands for? North Carolina Turnpike Authority. Uh, the folks that gave you the billion dollar Triangle Expressway, um, uh, $788 million they're trying to get funding for this year. So we see that there could be a lot of private money, a lot of interest in basically getting these capital funds up front. Uh, however, um, we've decided, we've determined the toll lines are a terrible way to pay for construction because you have operating costs that are significant. That, that's a little stretch of road in Atlanta, four to five million dollars a year to operate that. All right? Uh, and then you also, and that's a public road, you also got to pay profit. So what happens is you get pennies on the dollar uh, going toward construction. And the bottom line, we think, is that look, only those who are willing or able to pay extra are going to have good infrastructure. And yet, uh, SDUT is looking at $40 billion statewide total revenues uh, from the year 2020 uh, to the year 2040. Um, so if we summarize, uh, right now, from our perspective, my I-77, we see all the necessary elements coming together. We saw that there's $107 million. Uh, we saw that we had a local priority uh, from Mumpo, which in turn generates a state priority. Look, I mean, if you're at the top of the list of Mumpo or near it, and if you're at the top of the list statewide, what does it take to get the road wide? Um, we see some key environmental legislation, but the state of North Carolina wants to build toll roads. Um, so now we got to ask, well, why, why does Tom Tillis want to build toll roads? Um, we were hoping to find that out when we, when we went to Raleigh. Um, quite frankly, we don't know. Um, you know, it's no secret that um, he's running for senator in 2014. Did y'all know that? I'm seeing a bunch of his not. So he's planning a run for senator, excuse me, against uh, KA again in 2014. Um, you know, it, maybe he's running on a platform of, of, uh, of tax reform, and, and maybe he wants to say, look, you know, I'm, I'm, uh, I, I lower taxes and I was able to build infrastructure. I don't know. It may be that he's, he's done the calculus and he said, um, you know, I don't need to carry Mecklenburg, or I don't think I'm going to carry Mecklenburg, and uh, and so I'm just I'm going to focus on the, on other parts of the state. Final line is we don't know, and, and I'm speculating here. I'm sure we have members of the press, and that's probably going to make some juicy quotes. So I'm going to stop right there. Um, <laughs> I'm learning, um, but uh, but so the question is, okay, well, well, what can you do? Well, if I email him or I call him, that's my email is going to go on the recycle bin. Um, right? But you guys can email him and you guys. And why, why he's not at least taking a look uh, and making an effort uh, to help his constituents uh, have their tax dollars reinvested in the region for the first time in four years. I mean, calling is actually more effective, quite frankly. Maybe a little bit more intimidating, but, uh, but they maybe a little much larger to call. Um, please follow us on my 77org is a place that you can. Um, that you can sign up for. You can also like us on Facebook. Um, we have a petition. I don't know if you, uh, is that right? Is that, we got those out the back? Okay. So um, we're going to have a petition available in the back, which basically says, and I want tolls. Okay, please look at general purpose lanes. So we would invite you, uh, if you'd be so inclined, to go ahead and sign up peti that petition. Uh, if you really don't like the tolls, um, we ask you to take some black petition forms and get some other folks to sign it. Um, there's an email address on the bottom. Uh, and uh, you just email us, and uh, we will arrange a time and a place um, to go ahead and pick up your, your sheets. And it doesn't have to be completed. If you think that you know you got that sheet as full as you can, uh, that's fine. Uh, right now, and we just started this, when, when did we start that? Maybe a week or two ago? So I think we got like, like 250, 300 signatures, something like that, uh, already. And of course, what we'd like is three or 4,000 signatures, or 5,000 signatures, and I think that would really send a message. Um, and finally, um, I didn't mention, but we are going to be publishing a voter's guide uh, in the summer, uh, which is going to be basically who we think is really actually going to fight for, for roads. And uh, before uh, we get some speculation going, no, I have no plans to run for commissioner. <coughs> I haven't given you my name, um, so I don't. Uh, so we'll just go ahead and, and send that one off. And with that, I think, um, I think we're done. And uh, Sharon, 